hydrogen production has to rely on the use of the grid, doesn't it? And green hydrogen will also require green sources from the grid. Um, what's your response to that, Craig? That's the um, widely held assumption that you need to electrolyze to make hydrogen all the time, and you don't. There's um, the thing that people forget about hydrogen, uh, they always look at its electrical properties or its physics, the physics as Mr. Musk likes to call it, but people forget about the chemistry of hydrogen. And the chemistry of hydrogen is very interesting. Hydrogen's in literally everything, <laughs> uh, except for a pure metal, for example, um, but it's in the grass clippings, it's in the cow manure, it's in the, the sewage treatment works, it's in, it's in the the soil, it's, it's everywhere, you name it. It's in obviously water, which is what most people look to, electrolysis. Um, but there are an increasing number of technologies to isolate this hydrogen from all of these various, what we have come to term, hydrogen reserves. And basically, hydrogen reserves today are not appreciated as energy reserves at all. But I can assure you, in the next few years, um, hydrogen reserves will be appreciated for what they are, and that is fuel. So it could be a municipal rubbish collection vehicle bringing back a load of garbage. It could be the biomass from a dairy farm. It could be all these things. These are all hydrogen reserves, and they're just waiting to be converted into hydrogen, usable hydrogen. Historically, there hasn't been value in doing that because fossil fuels were cheap, and fossil fuel consumers were not being charged the real cost of the fossil fuels, which should have included the carbon footprint, the emissions profiles, the transport of the unrefined and semi-refined products, which none of this has ever factored in to the carbon footprint of fossil fuels. If you start to look at end-to-end -end viability, uh, you'll find that hydrogen produced close to the point of consumption from locally available means, whatever that might be, um, is going to be the lowest carbon footprint. It's going to be zero to negative carbon intensity and cheap, affordable, providing cheaper driven miles than any other means of propulsion.